Hi, everyone. Welcome to the December edition of the Reading Research Recap. I have a really interesting study that I'm excited to share with all of you guys this month. And the core question that the researchers asked was after you're providing explicit, systematic, direct synthetic phonics instruction, so all those great things that we know that you should be doing for explicit instruction, how do you still help your beginning struggling readers? What additional instruction should you be providing them? And they investigated three experimental conditions, additional phonological awareness instruction, additional decoding instruction, or additional instruction in letter sound knowledge. Now stick around because the results are pretty surprising and I think they have implications for this ongoing discussion or debate on whether phonological awareness instruction should be done in the dark, meaning in the absence of letters or in combination with print or letters. All right, first, a little bit of background on the study. The study took place in England where synthetic phonics instruction is mandatory, but we all know that even with systematic explicit phonics instruction, some students struggle. So 222 struggling beginning readers in England, so age six to eight and a half years, were randomly assigned to one of three conditions. So in the phonological awareness training condition, they were asked to segment and blend phonemes of words orally without ever seeing the words. In the letter sound condition, they saw each word, but did not produce the blended form. Instead, they were asked to say the phoneme corresponding to each grapheme within the word. The decoding condition kind of blended both of those two former conditions. So it included blending as in the PA condition, but also the written form as the word as in the letter sound condition. So what were the results? Interestingly, they didn't find a statistically significant difference across those three conditions, meaning that they were all equally beneficial when it came to the outcome measure of that dynamic decoding test. However, surprisingly, they found that the decoding condition was better for the sound deletion task. So this is surprising because there was a phonological awareness condition, and yet the decoding condition is the one that improved the phonological awareness skills. Now, there are a few study limitations worth mentioning because these might explain why the researchers got the results they did. So first of all, the study may have been too short to detect significant effects between the three conditions. Also, the measure may have not been sensitive enough as many students were still getting a score of zero. The researchers made a decision not to have a baseline measure of that dynamic decoding skill before the interventions because they didn't want to preview the words to the students before they saw them in the conditions. So these are all things to consider for a future study. So what's the big take home message and what are the practical implications for your classroom? Well, given the fact that there were no differences among conditions, yet the decoding conditions seem to somehow improve phonological awareness skills, it suggests, so this study suggests, that the decoding condition is perhaps most beneficial in the long run because you're not only getting improvements on that decoding test, but you're also getting improvements in phonological awareness. All right. As promised, up next is a little extra bonus study on a research study on Santa. So this paper was so seasonal, so topical, I could not resist covering it. So if you celebrate Santa, do you remember how you learned that Santa wasn't real and how did that make you feel? So those are the two questions that these researchers asked both children and adults. And I have to say, I just love that there's research on things like this. So let's figure out exactly what they did and what they found. Researchers conducted two studies, some with children, some with adults, and some of the adults were parents of the children that responded. And they asked them, how did you come to know that Santa wasn't real? And how did this make you feel? First, they found that the average age of disbelief, so when kids learn to know that Santa isn't real, is around eight, and but there was significant variability, so a lot of um, differences in individuals between that. They also found that about a third of children and about a half of adults reported negative feelings or negative emotions when they found out that Santa wasn't real, which is a little bit sad, but importantly, those um Feelings were short-lived, and even many of the adults that said that they reported having those negative feelings, they would still celebrate Santa with their own children. 
So what are the practical implications of this study? And this one really hits home with me because I have a little kid. Well, actually, he's not so little anymore. He turned seven in October and he says that he still believes in Santa. And of course, I don't want him to have negative emotions or feelings when he comes to know that Santa's not real. And I definitely don't want him to have trust issues with me as a parent over this when he's older. So what does this paper say about how to transition your kids to learn that Santa's not real? Well, they say that setting up an environment where they sort of naturally come to that conclusion themselves is best. So you can lower your amount of Santa promotion and sort of let them figure it out on their own. All right, whether or not you celebrate Santa or a different winter festival or tradition or no tradition at all, I hope everyone has a fun and safe next couple of weeks and I'll see everyone in 2024.